Our next presenter is uh, Gary from the, uh, he's the director of community service. He's working with Bert, I think. Bert, if you wanted to. Well, I'm working in. with Gary. Ah, I see. <laughs> On the age friendly initiative with uh, the city and county of Honolulu as well as the University of Hawaii. So, you know, Gary kind of gave up some valuable time to uh, join us this morning. And, and this is a, you know, initiative that uh, is really kind of getting spearheaded by the city and county. But there's data that is uh, available from them as well as state of Hawaii. So, Gary, take it away. Aloha. 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 Thank you for having us here. Um, Bert told me, hey, you want to have lunch? Got free pizza on Saturday. Come by. <laughs> So I said, okay, I made the schedule. I said, I'll come by. And then he said, oh, by the way, um, here's all the stuff you got to do for your pizza. So I think anybody who's worked with Bert has maybe had the same um, um, experience. But you know what, folks? Let's give a hand to our speakers like Jessica and Kimo and, and, and Scott for the time that they put into not only today, but all the things they have to do on a day-to-day -day basis. So give it up to them. And... Also, give it, give it up to Ryan and Burt, because whenever they're around, things just are fun and, and educative and good to be at. So give, give it up to them, the guys with the lace. Um, my name is Gary Nakata. I'm the, the director of the Department of Community Services. And in that area, we work with a lot of things. We work with WIOA. We try to get people with barriers to employment um, to employment. We work with the homelessness. We work with... Um, uh, not only do we do uh, homelessness issues, we do low to moderate income issues, and we also deal with elderly issues. And on top of all that, we are involved um, directly with an initiative uh, called the Age Friendly Initiative, which is a uh, tri-partnership between um, ARP um, and the World Health Organization and the city and county of Honolulu. Um, I wrangled Bert into that. And in, uh, in, in exchange, he's wrangled me into this. And first of all, let me just say, coders, you've got the ability to change the world. Let me say that again. You've got the ability to change the world. Because two years ago, my wife and I did a staycation um, at Hill Hilton Hawaiian Village. And we drove to the, the hotel on Kuhio Street to eat at 24-7. We drove, OK? Because of a little thing called Pokemon Go now, I had to walk to the Waikiki Aquarium, and I had to walk all the way back to the Hilton Hawaiian Village. And because of that, I was rewarded with cheesecake. 52 <laughs> years old, I walked for four miles when I had access to a car. You can change the world. You can get people exercising again. You can get people enjoying the sights again. You can, you can get people to be healthy again through different mediums that make them laugh, to make them smile, to make them enjoy. That's one thing that I've seen in this room just in the last hour and a half listening to people. You literally can change the world in a way where people can feel empowered. And so um, I hurriedly made my staff and my committee put together this presentation. Uh, just want to start off with a couple of stories. Um, uh, six years ago, um, well, really quickly, two days ago, got a call from my doctor. Hey, you know what? Your biopsy is scheduled for next Monday. Everything's set. You know, Three months ago, she told me, all we're going to do is we're going to poke a little needle into you, local anesthetic, bring it out, and we're going to examine what we got in you. Great. Not a problem, right? Okay. Two days ago, or yesterday, I go to the doctor. We do blood work. Staff tells me, hey, you know, you're going to come 1 o'clock. We're going to put you under general anesthesia. You wake up in the recovery room four hours later. You should be doing all right. What is the first thing I do? I whip out my phone. I go to Google. I write in general anesthesia death rate because I want to know what the risks are. How many of you do that? As soon as you see something on TV, as soon as you see something on, uh, you, you hear uh, on the phone or in conversation, you don't know what's going on. You guys could all be sitting here, right here, and going, who the hell is this Gary Nakata, right? You're Googling. You're Googling stuff already. You're Googling WIOA. You're Googling developmental disabilities. You're Googling general anesthesia death rate. Because you want to know. We live in a society now where we want the information immediately. And believe it or not, our kupuna, the ones that are 60 years and old, older, you would think they're not computer savvy. Well, my aunties, they're all about 80 years old. They're the same way. They hear something on TV. They hear something on K-drama, K-pop, or whatever. They're Googling it. We live in a society where we're tethered to this. You know why? Because it's a lot more dignity to be able to say, I don't know, to a telephone. 
to Siri than to somebody on the hotline or to somebody that comes to your house. Isn't that true? Isn't that true? And that's why coders, you have the change, you have the ability to change the world because you have the ability to allow people to empower themselves to get the information they need in the dignity of their own homes, right? But the most important thing is to make sure they get the right information. There's a lot of misinformation out there, there's a lot of disinformation, and there's a lot of uninformation out there. Uninformation meaning the information is not there. So I challenge all of you before I even get into my spiel to change the world for some of the people that we're talking about today. The ones that Jessica talked about, the one that Scott talks about, and the people that I'm gonna be able to talk about. Am I speaking too fast? Because that just means I'm really nervous, <laughs> very nervous. I'd like to thank Ken Schmidt and uh, Chris Dacus, people from our committee, um, even Bert Lum for being here. Uh, I think they told me that we're gonna be here to support you, Gary. I seriously believe they're here to grab me before I run out the door and to make sure I make the spiel today. So Ken, Chris, thanks. Tell everybody on the committee, I'm here, I showed up, I made it, and I've started. Again, coders, I'm gonna keep saying this, you have the ability to change the world because these people all depend on these little things we have in our hands. And let me tell you another story. Um, six years ago, I got a call from the Las Vegas coroner's office. Um, sad story. Basically, do you know an individual um, who lives at this house? Um, and I realized that's the address for my father in Las Vegas, 82 years old. And to get a call from the Las Vegas medical coroner's office saying, do you know this individual? And I said, I think I do. And they said, well, I'm sorry to tell you. And they gave me the whole story of about how they discovered this individual, how EMS went out there. And the only thought that came to my mind was, I just talked to him six days ago. Did he have somebody to turn to? Did he have a caseworker? Did he have a social worker? And back then, you're busy, you're working, you're in a law firm. You know, things don't come up, um, come up like that. But I do know this. Every time he needed help, he would call. He would call me or he would call my niece. And what do you do when he calls? What do you do when he calls? And I remember another story two years before that. He called and said, you know what? This guy that said he was the son of a neighbor came and picked me up at the hospital and took me home. And he was so great, he became my friend. And I said, great, Dad. And he goes, but you know what? Today he took me to the casino. He made me take out my credit card and draw $50,000. And I said, what do you, and I sat there going, what do you do? What, what do I do? My dad is crying on the other side of the phone, right? And, and certain age groups, what do they do? We, we, in that age group, they grew up opening the yellow pages. Well, you know what, we don't have yellow pages anymore. When was the last time any of you looked in a yellow page? And if you did look in the yellow page, when was the last time you got the information that you needed? You got a bunch of ads. I would love to have a giant yellow, yellow pages telephone book. I click on an ad for elderly services or fraud abuse or elder abuse and a whole bunch of reviews come out from people. Don't talk to so-and-so at that department because that customer service was junk. Rather than that, call Scott Morishige. Here's his personal cell phone number, <laughs> which is what I do half of the time, or Jun Yang. But the most important thing is I wish, I wish at the time that my dad called I could have opened something and said, Dad, I typed in Las Vegas, I typed in, typed in elder abuse, um, I looked at the reviews, here's the person you gotta call because this is the person I'm gonna call to help you. Instead, I was lucky. There was a fellow by the name of Gilbert who worked at the local credit union over there. I called him and I said, Gilbert, I need your help. I reached out to a friend, a person that I knew, the one person that I knew in Las Vegas. He got in his car, he drove over to my dad's house, picked up my dad and took him to the right people in Las Vegas to help him out. We were able to work something out. At the end of the day, my dad died, I think, really trouble-free, worry-free. That's just one story, but how many of you have elderly uncles, aunties, parents living in another city that you know if there's a problem, they're gonna call you? How many of you? How many of you have uncles and aunties, kupuna, people that depend on you, that if they get trouble right here in Honolulu, they're gonna call you? How many of you within 20 years from now are gonna be calling your nieces and nephews, sons and daughters, because you don't understand what's going on? Because I tell you, when that crisis comes and hits you, elder abuse, health problem, doctor coming on and going, is there somebody that I can talk to you? Because you're exhibiting onset of dementia and your family needs to be involved. How many of you are prepared 20 years from now to be able to make that call to somebody? 
Or are you going to sit there and go, I want to learn a little bit more about onset of dementia first? Well, here's my question. Is that information out there in an easy-to-do app? If one of you can come up to me today and say, hey, go to Google Play Store. There's an app. People can download it. My problem is solved. Our problem is solved. Our Kapuna's problems are solved. I tried to look. There isn't an app like that. There isn't an app like that. If there is, please tell me before I go into this spiel. So, so Gary, Gary, um, you know, just um, uh, don't take this wrong. Yeah, I mean, very respectfully. I'm going to go. You got slides or what? No, I no. So, slides. yeah, we we actually kind of like tight on time. So, okay. can <laughs> can we? Oh, but I had them, Bert. I had. I know, them I know. You had, them, you had them. <laughs> okay. So, give me uh, with your indulgence, Judge Lum, five more minutes. <laughs> I give you one. Okay. <laughs> three. Okay, three. Okay. Age Friendly Initiative, ARP, next slide. Oh, I got the controller here. Um, never before has there been more elderly growing at a certain pace um, and becoming a greater part of our population. This is a worldwide problem. Not, it's not a national problem. It's not a local problem. It's a worldwide problem. You go to Japan, they're facing the same thing. Can I get the next slide? You've all heard of it. We've got problems with homelessness. We've got problems with dislocated workers. We've got problems with disability network. We've also got problems with an aging tsunami. In about 10 years, um, the aging community is going to be a significant part of our population. Your uncles, your aunties, your parents, even ourselves. Next slide, please. Hawaii is growing at an, uh, at a, older at a faster pace than the US. 2030, 23%. A quarter of Hawaii's population will be 65 plus compared to 19% in the US. Next slide. Is it a crisis or opportunity? We all like to make things pleasant and put it into positive connotation. Next slide. We all like to say it's an opportunity for innovation, but folks, it's a crisis. And we need your help. Your family needs your help. Your kupuna needs your help. The people that are out there that need your love need your help today. Next slide, please. Here's the vision. We want our elderly to actively age in place, meaning in their home, independent, engaged. 30 years ago, if we knew somebody was going to get old, what was the line? Family gets together. They say, OK, let's put them in the old folks' home where they can get the care they need. That's not the model anymore. People get to grow old in the place, in the home that they bought, in the place where they raised their kids. And how do we do that? We get, bring them the care that they need to their homes. Next slide. One of the things that's really important is transportation. Um, we need to keep them mobile. We need to keep it safe. We need to keep it convenient. There should be no, no excuse for our kupuna not to know where the dangerous places um, are in Honolulu and in the world um, to cross the street. Next slide, please. We need timely and responsive public transit and safe and accessible pedestrian routes. Next slide, please. We have a lot of data available. With us today is Ken Schmidt um, from the city who deals with, Ken just raised his hand, who deals with uh, GIS mapping. Um, when we get together after this, we'd be glad to share with you all the data that we have that you can use and be at your disposal to help our, our, our people, our kapuna. Next slide, please. Um, we also want to make sure that our, our, our older adults can stay active, healthy, and connected to our community. Uh, next slide, please. Um, the question really is, how can our older adults find out about programs, health services, classes in their neighborhood? How can community members enter information about new classes and events? And how can you, the community, provide feedback on these events? And here's the deal. We've got Yelp. We've got Yelp, right? And Yelp tells you everything about the community. What restaurants are good, what shows are good, what events are good. You know what? We really want something like a Yelp application where an older person, like my father or like your kupuna, can go on and say, I need to know about who can provide me care um, right now with the onset of dementia. And where, where am I going to be five years from now? And as a kupuna, you know what they're worried about? You know what they're really worried about? They're worried about not being burdens on us. They want to talk to somebody about how not to be a burden to the people they love five years from then. They're still trying to take care of us. Um, challenge to you, and I'll be available after this, is can they pick up an apparatus like this and go in and get the care they need? 
can our community service workers in helping um, somebody like a kupuna out in the field, my staff at the elderly services division, pick up an app? They are in Pearl City at the time. They are working with somebody that needs a service. Can they pick up an app and go Pearl City? Who do we have within a one mile radius to help this person? Okay. Not only that, all of you that are gonna be helping Kupuna later on, you, the caregiver, when your mother and father come to you and say, call you up and say, you know what, I'm in Maui right now. Um, I, live, you know, I moved here 10 years ago to Kihei. I need help, what can you do for me? What are you gonna do? What is our entire community gonna do? What are we all gonna do to help these people who have cared for us the last 40 to 50 years? I'm gonna cut it short here. We need a Yelp application that service providers, the caregivers, that the, our elderly people can all use to get the care that they need, because they deserve it. Don't you agree? Yeah? I need your help. We need your help. Please, I'll be around. Ken will be around. I just volunteered him to be around. Um, Chris will be around. Um, even Bert will be around. I'm asking. You all will change the world. Somebody in here will be a multimillionaire. If I have to throw profit into this, understand this. This app will have a worldwide market potential. I can't think of another place that has this, and as Ryan sneaks up on me, I'm gonna exit right. Okay? Thank you very much.